Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, broadcasting on channels television live from Lagos. A quick reminder of our main stories now. President Muhammad Buhari tells the Togolese President for Jiang Bay that the commendable efforts have been made to isolate the Boko Haram insurgents. The Nigeria Labour Congress, the NLC, advocates capital punishment for Treasury looters. House of Representatives postpones investigation into the non-implementation of capital projects in the 2015 budget. And 30 people die in clashes in the Turkish city of Chisra. Do remember that all our top stories can be found on our website. It's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. When you're done downloading, we do urge you to please interact with the Channels Eyewitness feature on our Android, our iOS and Windows platforms. If you've got pictures or videos to share with us, simply tap on the Channels TV app on your device. Swipe to reveal the Eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. And speaking of our eyewitness portal, we have these reports that you sent in. And we begin with this one from Quara State, showing what is left of a building with our eyewitness reporters saying that the, it collapsed at 3.40 this morning. Thankfully, residents of the building had evacuated before the unfortunate incident. And next is this photo of a burning car at the Oniru area of Lagos State. Our reporter says that the fire could have been put out if the vehicle had a fire extinguisher. And from Akure Ondo State Capital is this report of a flooded road. Our eyewitness reporter says that good drainage would help mitigate this problem. And finally is this report of an overloaded bus in Uluwale on Lagos Island, Lagos State. Our reporter is asking that the roads should be made safer by discouraging practices such as this. Well, thank you for sending in those pictures. We do appreciate them indeed. Keep them coming. The British government is confident that the anti-corruption war being driven by the Buhari-led administration will reignite investment confidence and allow investors to venture into other sectors outside of oil and gas. The British Deputy High Commissioner, Mr Ray Kyle, told Channels Television at an event in Lagos, southwest of Nigeria, that a level playing field is needed to actualize the gains of economic diversification. The British envoy says that his government is ready to engage a policy dialogue that will strengthen trade relations of both countries through opportunities that abound in other sectors of Nigeria's economy. Just as a country needs to diversify, we want to look at other areas that Britain um, has the expertise, uh, where British companies have the potential to be doing more business with Nigeria. So, education sector, ICT, agriculture, as, as we've heard today, and retail. You know, British band, brands are very strong around the world. And I'm already sensing, even as a new arrival, that uh, there is a strong appetite for uh, buying British goods. So we want to see how we can grow that sector, perhaps initially through online, but seeing whether more uh, British firms can be persuaded to, to invest here and, and set up shops as, as malls grow and so forth. Um, the barriers are the ones that we all know about. Um, when uh, you know, we want to see to what extent import restrictions are holding back British firms. We want to see to what extent uh, there is, if you, if you analyze contracts, to what extent British firms have lost out or have not been encouraged to bid because of an assumption that even if they've got the best price, they've got the best product, they won't get the contract because they're not willing to pay a bribe as part of the, the contract process. But, but I'm a relatively new arrival. What I want to do is understand the market better. So we're going to invest in doing that analysis. And through that analysis, we will be able to, to guide British firms better, British potential investors, to understand you know, what the market opportunities are and where they are. And to understand better the barriers to, to the growth in, in, in the British, Britain's share of, of, of imports. As I say, it's about 4.5% at the moment. I want to see that grow. 
in absolute terms, but as a percentage of, of imports. But to do that, we've got to be able to take a message to British traders, British investors, that the, the, the climate on the ground in Nigeria is changing. And the more we can see that from the top, from President Buhari and from the cabinet that he will announce this month, uh, then we can start a process of engagement, of dialogue, to look at the policy reforms that are necessary that will both help the Nigerian economy grow, but will also help British business uh, trade with uh, Nigeria grow as well. British Deputy High Commissioner Mr Ray Kyle. The House of Representatives has again postponed investigations into the non-implementation of the capital projects in the 2015 budget. The chairman of the ad hoc committee announced the postponement after some members of the committee questioned the absence of the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Finance at the hearing. Our correspondent, Lanry Lassisi, has the report. State. After putting off its investigative hearing last week, the ad hoc committee of the House of Representatives looking into the non-implementation of capital components of the 2015 budget were on hand to receive submissions from government agencies led by the Ministry of Finance. The chairman of the committee expressed the parliament's concern over the implementation level of the budget. There is nothing to show the implementation of the capital provisions by the Federal Executive Branch, despite the fact that we are in the tail end of the third quarter of the financial year. But the Director General of the Budget Office, however, started with an apology that the Permanent Secretary will not be attending the hearing. His apology did not stop the tide that followed. And to come this one and say that Mr. President suddenly called the Permanent Secretary as the excuse for her not responding and appearing before the National Assembly, for me, to say the least, is an attempt to bring a wedge between the executive and the legislature. And in this new dispensation, such a behavior must be condemned. I believe, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the only thing left for us is to summon him to appear tomorrow. As long as he remains in the Federal Republic of Nigeria territory, he has not traveled, nobody has told us that he traveled abroad. He be someone, she be someone to appear before this honorable committee tomorrow. What I've seen here is that I've seen agencies talking about their personal, their individual department, um, capital, uh, budget performance. But what we want to look at is the, the national budget, the national budget performance. What has accrued to the nation and what has been spent? The chairman then resolved that the hearing be put off till next week, even though it was made clear that the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Finance will still not be available. There's no problem. It has been agreed that um, I can represent the permanent secretary. Yes. So this committee is a very understanding committee, and um, th that's how the issues should be between the executive and um, legislature. We have not come to quarrel. We have come to do a world of good for the nation. So we understand their position. And um, they have given us some little more time because they say they need additional information. It is expected that this hearing will help the 8th Assembly understand the challenges facing the budgeting process in Nigeria and how to overcome them. Lan Ray Lassese, Channels Television News. And to have a broader perspective on this, I'm being joined on the news at 10 by Honorable Nicholas Osai, member of the House of Representatives at her committee on the non-implementation of the 2015 budget. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us on the news at 10. Well, this appears to be a constant issue between the parliament and the executive. What is the committee out to achieve this time around in this hearing? Thank you, my brother, for uh, raising the issues for that, the oversight function of the House. Uh, the House, in a resolution, shout that the adult committee be able to determine if there are infractions on the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Fiscal and Responsibility Act as regards implementation of the Appropriation Act. I think the court committee was saddled to be able to determine that, and Robo have already started. As of last week, we try as much as possible to invite the appropriate ministries and agencies that are consigned 
you know, to tender some information to the committee. But to our greatest surprise, uh, they informed the committee that uh, mm. we should give them more time. And we did. Today, the, the permanent secretary, Minister of Finance, did not appear, as you've heard already. And we believe that uh, there must be this synergy between the executives and the parliament. And uh, the uh, parliament has been given the power for an oversight function. Mm. Look at it, because nothing is happening in the country. And we believe that uh, if the executive is implementing the appropriation act, I think a lot of soccer will come to Nigeria. Dividends I, I'm, I'm having a little uh, issue hearing you properly. If you could just spruce up a little bit more and become a little more audible just so I can hear you properly. In the meantime, is the parliament having a challenge to check this trend of poor implementation of yearly budgets? Uh, the most important issue is to gather information from the executive uh, because the purpose of the investigation, you give us the critical area, the information. Has the budget been implemented? Has money been released? You know, we have, we have to look at it. But the information that was brought to us was not enough because we are talking of the generality of the Appropriation Act. Sometimes you see only the capital budget has been pushed, uh, the details of the capital budget has been pushed, the overheads are not there, the recurrent expenditures are not there. Mm -hmm. I believe that they should tidy up and bring the information by next week. I think that resulted our joining the House. Could this mean, though, that some of our agencies, such as the uh, Fiscal Responsibility Commission, are failing in their jobs? Well, we cannot say that for now, and, uh, because the committee is saddled to get this information, and we believe we've guided them appropriately, so that they'll be able to bring the information that is needed for the legislative arms to use to work. And that is why we adjourned the House till next week, to enable them to put their papers together. The papers are not complete. And the chairman, in his wisdom, decided to put the, uh, the meeting to next week, Tuesday. And I believe that uh, the appropriate thing to do, we are partnering with the president for change. You know, transparency is the order of the day. And we'll be able to tell the ministries and the agency that they should put their house in order and bring this paper forward to the legislative arm so that we can be able to use it to help Nigerians. The essence of it is that a time has passed when appropriation act is passed and the appropriation act are not well implemented i think that's the essence of the the investigation if you look at the, the fiscal and responsibility act section 25 2026 mm -hmm. and 28 of that act you will agree with me that it has provisions that after 30 days of enactment of an appropriation act there must be schedule that we push forward for uh, implementation of that uh, by the Minister of Finance. And after another three months, that is section 28, subsection 1 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, says after three months of enactment of an appropriation act, mm. the minister that was saddled in that ministry, Minister of Finance, to be able to determine whether the budget is implementable or not. If the budget is not implementable, then certain measures will come to play. I think most of this information is what we want to know. Since the budget is not being implemented, mm. we're not seeing things happening. And Nigerians are crying. Nigerians need the dividends of democracy that calls for change. Our youth are unemployed. So we're supposed to know most of this fact. And these facts are supposed to be generated through the executive arm. Mm. So that at the end, when the parliament resumes in, in 28th of this month, we'll be able to make our report. And the parliament will be informed, Nigerians will be informed mm. about what is happening in the economy. Honourable Nicholas, want to thank you so much indeed for speaking with us on the News at 10. We've been speaking to Honourable Nicholas Osai, Member of the House of Repres Representatives at Herc Committee on the non-implementation of the 2015 budget. Well, still ahead on the News at 10, our continued coverage of the 100 days of performance of President Muhammad Buhari, the health sector is in retrospect. We'll be joined much later by the President of the Nigeria Medical Association, Dr. Kayode Obembe. Join us again.